Hey, what's up guys? Tuki here, back again. This is a Nation United, and let's go ahead and get stomped by the Calgary Flames, shall we? <laughs> I cannot say that I have any more confidence as I record this episode than I did in ending the last episode where I knew we'd be facing Calgary. It's going to be bad, man. We are going to have so much trouble, and talking about our lineup... I did end up making some changes now. It's it's risky because obviously, you know, changing up the lineup that got us to this point is a bit of a risk, you know, just in general. But giving someone like Dolan and Stromwall a chance on the second line, giving Jens Luke a chance on the third line, knowing this is Elias Anderson's potential last game once Forsbaka Carlson comes back, although he might be out for longer than just game one. Defensively, Liljegren putting him on the top pairing with Hampus Lindholm. It's just trying to find that extra spark that this team needs to at least make this series competitive because I genuinely don't expect it to be. I normally feel like we have somewhat of a chance. I fully expect this to be swept. Especially, too, as you can see, their captain is Evgeny Malkin. In fairness to us, we do have them beat in the overall ratings, but how much stock can you actually put into that? That is the question for me personally. I don't put a whole hell of a lot of stock into it. You guys might, though. But one thing we will do is we'll look at the lineup and let you guys decide what you think is going to happen from there. Top line for the Flames, Mike Hoffman. Again, keep in mind that they went the full seven games in the first round, but nine points in seven games for Hoffman. He's centered by Malkin with Jordan Eberle on the right-hand side. What a line that is. Oh my god, <laughs> just what a line that is. It's going to be so difficult to stop. Second line is Jordan Greenway. He has six points so far this postseason with Nicholas Backstrom and Marcus Johansson. Two Swedes that we just haven't acquired at all in this series. Although, wouldn't it be amazing if Backstrom ends up being a free agent and falls right into our lap? That would be fantastic. The third line, you have Tavo Teravainen with Martin Hansel. And Mackenzie Entwistle, the fourth line, Brett Pollock, Ryan McInnes, and Julius Julius Natinen. Natinen? I have no idea. Hopefully you don't score too much. Just saying. Just saying. Defensively, it's alright, I'll say. <laughs> I don't know. I wanna I don't wanna take too many shots at him because they'll rip me apart from that. Top pairing, you have Truba and Kevin Shattenkirk. Second pairing, Oli Ulevi and Shea Theodore. Third pair. Christopher Gunnarsson with Zach Bogosian. He's an old player of ours, so he's going to rip us to shreds. That's just how this works. The goaltender, Tuka Rask at 33 years old. Only had a 9.15 save percentage. Maybe the reason why Calgary went 7 in that first round. However, as I always say, just because he had a rough first round doesn't mean that we're going to have an easy series ahead of us. More than likely, he's going to find his game, and this series is going to get that much more difficult. But one way or another, it is time to find out. Again, if we win a game, I'll be happy. But let's see. You never know how the sim will work in this game. First period of game one in Calgary, and it is scoreless. All right, just about even in shots. Second period who will establish a lead, if anybody, and it's us, surprisingly. Jens Luke, promoted to the third line and making the most of it. He gets the opening goal of this game. 22 shots to 17 now at the end of the opening 40 minutes. Third period, let's go. What a goal for Jens Luke. We have a power play that we lost immediately. And then Jordan Greenway scores for the Flames. We have another power play opportunity that, again, we can't do anything with. No surprise there. We have another one. Please, for the love of God. Oh my, we deserve to lose. We deserve to lose. I hope we do, if anything. We're going to overtime. I can't wait to see if that was a major or just consecutive penalties. Unacceptable. Unacceptable. Overtime. And we ended up winning the game anyway. <laughs> I fully expected us to lose. To not take advantage of that big of a power play opportunity is insane. But in the end, Lucas Bengston gets the winner 37 seconds into it. 
and the Swedes avoid disaster. And surprise, surprise, win game one by the score of 2-1. to one. 26 saves for Robin Leonard and Lucas Bengston with the GWG. I for fucking, oh, I forgot to check. Oh, well. I fucking, I meant to hit over one extra time. That didn't happen. That's okay. That's okay. Shit happens. Shit happens. Now, we already scouted out the Liga. So, let's go back to the SHL. We are going to have very few options when it comes to who to actually draft in the next round, or in the next draft, I should say. But let's fix up this lineup. Lias Anderson has to be the one sent down. He has a minus three. He has two assists, but his time will come. He'll probably be good enough to be on this roster next year. But for now, Carlson will slot back in. And that's good news, of course, for the Ontario Reign. But let's take a look here. He's set up as a right wing. Yes, he is, which is fine by me. Is he a better center? Yes, he is. So there you go. He'll be the fourth line center moving forward. And then down in the AHL, Axel Holmstrom needs to be replaced by Elias Anderson. All right. So we'll send down Soderlund, Stenland, and we'll get Elias Anderson in there. Yeah, second line works. Actually, no, we'll put him up on the first line. Put him up on the first line. Power play lines. Something we need to think about here. And you'd like to think that they would have done better, but apparently not. We want the right-handed shots on that side. That was my mistake. So Dolan and Stromwall... I mean, it's not bad as compared to having Burkowski and Arvidsson there. It's not too bad. Stromwall, three points, a minus five. You know, I'm going to put Arvidsson and Burkowski there, I think. I think. We'll have the veterans in there on the power play line. Why not? We'll give them a chance to see what they can do. And I might bump up Philip Forsberg to that top line. We'll see. Let's double check here. So, let's see. I mean, we have pretty much all righties. That's a big part of the problem. Let's go with Ricard Raquel down there. We'll bump up Philip Forsberg. There we go. There we go. That looks better. That looks better. And we'll see if the team can do anything now. But Forsbacher Carlson is back. We are ready for game two. Let's see if we can make the most of this opportunity, man. The good thing is, we've already won at least a game on their home ice. We've won a game on the road, neutralized that home ice advantage for now. But needless to say, a 2-0 lead would be that much sweeter. Let's see what happens. First period here of game two, and that's about what I expected, to be honest. 11 shots to 8, but Evgeny Malkin, the difference maker so far. Second period, can we turn it around? Mm, not really. I mean, technically, yes, Ricard Raquel tied the game up, but then it's Natanen and Malkin, another one. I imagine that's pronounced in the Tynan. But Evgeny Malkin, his second of the game, makes it a 3-1 scoreline. And we're going to start the third period. Very, very likely that we head back to Stockholm in a tie series. Jordan Greenway just pretty much confirmed that again. Not the best. Okay, can we at least can we at least lose with some dignity here? Thank you, Philip Forsberg. Oh my God, five two in game two. At the very least, like I was mentioning before, Jordan Greenway decided to embarrass us. We at least took one game of the first two on the road, but needless to say, that can't happen again. Five goals against in a playoff game is just in. Embarrassing, even in a video game. Even in a video game. So we need to turn it around. We're going to be on our home ice for game three. I want to take a look. Robin Leonard does have a 935 save percentage still, so it wasn't necessarily him. Probably more of the team in front of him. We will keep everything the same for now. We're not going to panic just yet. Not not yet, <laughs> but soon, if we lose this game, we're going to jump right into a Game 3 in Stockholm. Let's go. Can we bounce back after dropping Game 2? 
Let's find out. First period here of game number three. And it's a goal apiece. Lucas Bengston and Martin Hansel. Just a minute and a half or so later. And we are tied. Again, we outshot them, but we're not making the most of it. We're not making the most of it whatsoever. That needs to change. <laughs> Imagine how much more confident we would be if it was 12 to 7 in shots and one nothing on the board. That's all I'm saying, Leonard. That's all I'm saying. I'm not blaming you for the losses so far, but please, a little bit of consistency. It was an outside shot, too. Come on, Smart and Hansel. Second period. Oh, boy. Yeah. Okay, this is going to be interesting. Victor Arvidsson and Christian Gunnarsson. We knew it was a guarantee that he would score a goal. Thankfully, it's only in the second period and not like a triple overtime winner. At least not yet. And that'll happen now that I said it. We're tied. Two goals apiece. Third period here in this crucial game three. Here we go. Next goal could win it. Let's hope not, right? Let's hope not. Mike Hoffman from center ice. From center ice. Do you want Marcus Hogberg to start the next game? Because that's how Marcus Hogberg will end up starting the next game. William Nylander ties it with 2.45 to go. We again are going to overtime the second time in three games. Thank God for William Nylander. Overtime. Overtime in game three. Will it end early once again? Not as early as last time we have a power play. Please, please. Our power play sucks. And it has for so long. Halfway through the OT, will there be a winner? Can somebody get that golden goal? Yes, it's Lucas Bengston. Oh my god, what a hero. <laughs> what a hero. Lucas Bengston in overtime again. And we have a 2-1 series lead. Lucas Bengston. Two goals in game three, including the OT game winner. Victor Arvidsson also up there in terms of points. But the fact that Mike Hoffman scored from center ice and it almost cost us the game is incredibly frustrating. That is incredibly frustrating. We'll keep the lineup the same, of course, now that we've won this game. And I also want to take a look at how the Ontario Reign are doing. And they are up 2-0 on the Tucson Roadrunners. The undefeated Ontario Reign, at least thus far. Way to go. But the focus, of course, is with the main club, the Stockholm Kings. Game 4 on home ice, of course. Let's do this. Let's do this. Hopefully Lucas Bengston can keep up this ridiculous scoring pace of his. That would be great. First period of game four. And, I mean, it's not ideal, but it's not as bad as it looked like it was about to be. Evgeny Malkin scores. Jens Luke tied it. And then Ryan McInnes gives the Flames the lead once again. Down 2-1 at the end of 20. Second period is scoreless. Have them out shot 25 to 20. But McInnes' goal is currently the difference maker. Third period. Let's go. Can we take the 3-1 lead over Calgary? That will help. Malta Stromwall has tied this game. We have a power play, please. Oh my god, our power play sucks. Oh my god, it sucks so bad. Power play for the Flames and shorthanded goal. Adrian Kempe and then, oh my god, okay, I'm going to pause. Can I pause, please? <laughs> Can we just dissect what happened really quick? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Stromwall scores. We didn't do anything with our power play. Kempe scores shorthanded. And then Malkin scored on that same power play anyway. Adrian Kempe's first goal of the postseason. That, that's all. That's all I wanted to say. Let's go. Will we find a winner? Or are we going back to overtime again? Let's find out. Minutes ago. Overtime. Again. Oh my god. Third time in four games. Lucas Bengston is my pick. He's my pick. Let's go. Come on, Lucas. You can do this. You can do this ridiculous power play for the Flames. And Jens Luke, what a beast he has been in this episode. He and Bengston putting this team on their shoulders. Jens Luke, the overtime winner. And the Stockholm Kings are one game away. What a performance for Luke. What a performance for that third line in general. Unbelievable. I do want to take a look at the penalties this time, though. It was a... Oh my god, a double minor high sticking call on Hoppus Lindholm as I just cannot fight off. Oh, that burp. Oh my god. That, that's happened to me in like every episode lately. <laughs> it's so frustrating. 
It's so frustrating. What isn't frustrating? Beautiful segue. Is that we have a 3-1 series lead. Three overtime wins. <laughs> Unbelievable. And for the record, because I said something, of course the Ontario Reign ended up losing their previous game. We're not going to make any changes. We're good to go. We are good to go. Game four against Calgary. Back in the Saddle Dome. Unless, of course, they have a new arena by this point, which hopefully for Flames fans they do. Saddle Dome's legendary, but man, they need a new arena, don't they? First period of game five. All right, you know, that's not that's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. <laughs> Every time I see that there's a bunch of goals, I always figured we're going to be getting, you know, just blown out like 7 nothing. Hoppus Lindholm, 36 seconds in. Ole Olivi tied it, but then Ricard Raquel from way outside gives us the 2-1 edge at the end of the opening 20 minutes. Not too bad. Lindholm and Raquel. Beautiful. Second period. Can we hold on to the lead? Yes, we can. We can shut them down. 2-1 on the board. 20 minutes away from putting the Calgary Flames out of the playoffs until that one fourth liner scores and then up getting Balkan scores. All right. I guess the story is, the moral of the story, don't get ahead of yourself. But Forsberg, though, has tied this game. It's 3-all until Martin Hounsel scores. Hey, Leonard, if you'd like to stop a puck, that would be great. That would be wonderful. Can we find another late goal? Oh, my God, we can. It's Jens Luke, too. Just get to overtime. Just get to overtime. We get to overtime again. <laughs> my God, four times in five games. Jens Luke. Jens Luke has tied it up. We're going to overtime. Calgary season on the line. We are 3-0 in overtime. Let's go. Quick winner, most likely. Here we go. Come on, can we end the season? Can we end their season? Can we end this series? Please. Bengston, Luke. I'm not even calling on the Nylanders, who have been relatively quiet. Oh, my God. You know what? I can't even be mad. Well, I can, because Robin Leonard, come on. But that fourth liner... For the Flames, I don't like you. I don't like your face. I don't like your your face, just in general. I don't like it. I'm sorry. Damn you. <laughs> As we drop game five, we head back to Stockholm for game six. Pretty disappointing. The Ontario Reign at least won again. We're not going to panic. We're not going to make any lineup changes. We are going... In the game six, with a chance to end this series, and hopefully, more than likely I should say, we'll go to overtime again, because this is basically the equivalent of Washington-Toronto, apparently. Game six, here we go. First period, first period. Here we go, there we go. Good start, real good start there. Erickson Eck and Rasmus Anderson, two unlikely names, but two goals on ten shots. We've gotten to Tuka Rask early. At the end of 20, we have that 2-0 lead. Now we just need to maintain it. Please, no more than one goal for Calgary in this period. Thank you. You actually met my expectations. William Nylander made it 3-1, or a 3-0. Greenway made it 3-1. And then Jonathan Dolan with potentially the backbreaker. By the way, Greenway was just like Sparta kicking Robin Leonard as he scored that goal, apparently. But Jonathan Dolan, that could do it. That could do it 100%. A goal with 10 seconds ten seconds left. So rather than a 3-1 game, it's a 4-1 game. We should have this in the bag. Let's go. Third period, 20 minutes away from moving on to the Western Conference Finals, even though we are by far the team furthest to the east in the league at this point. Five minutes to go. I'm calling it an upset. Not quite the upset of the century, but one hell of an upset. The Stockholm Kings dispatch of the Calgary Flames in six games. And we're off to the Western Conference Final. I cannot believe it. And I'm sorry if my enthusiasm isn't through the roof right now. But I genuinely can't believe it. Ontario also moving on. They beat Tucson in five games. Everything's coming up Millhouse. For this franchise right now. Both teams moving on to the conference final. And we don't yet know who we're going to play. 
Winnipeg and Chicago have gone to a seventh game. Buffalo beat Tampa in six, and the Rangers beat Columbus in five. So an all-New York final over in the Eastern Conference. Well, let's take a look at our player stats now, shall we? After beating Calgary in six, again, I can't believe it. I genuinely thought we'd get swept, 100%. William Nylander, though, 11 points in 13 games. And I said, you know, the Nylanders, as far as scoring, you know, maybe not completely dominant. William Nylander obviously had a really good first series. But you know what? Some of the big names are delivering. Philip Forsberg, kind of a disappointing year, but he has eight points. Jens Luke and Lucas Bangston both have eight points. Overall, I mean, I don't have too many complaints. I am surprised at Lindholm and Liljegren's point production. Absolutely. Forsbacher Carlson has two points in five games. That's not awful. That's not awful. As long as our top players can continue to fire on all cylinders, as long as we get that secondary scoring, especially from our goaltending, we should be good to go. Poor Marcus Hogberg, by the way. But a 928 save percentage for Robin Leonard through 13 appearances isn't too bad at all. Again, we're moving on to the Western Conference Final. Who's it going to be in round three? Place your bets. Chicago or Winnipeg? Here we go. And it's the Winnipeg Jets. The 52-win Winnipeg Jets. Now let's go take a look here at the regular season. At the regular season. Who did better between those two teams? And it was Winnipeg. Winnipeg clinched the conference. Damn. We have to play the best team from the Western Conference. We have to play... The President's Trophy winning Winnipeg Jets in the third round. We are halfway there. But if you thought I was lacking confidence in our team heading into this episode, I think we might lose the series in three. <laughs> that very well could be the case. Guys, thank you so much for watching this episode. You know I greatly appreciate it. Let me know down in the comments below any feedback, suggestions for what we should do with the team or anything else. Of course, let me know. Make sure to hit that like button, of course, to help support the video and the channel. Subscribe if you haven't already to continue following this series and others. Follow me on Twitter at Tookie24 and join the notification squad. I'll see you guys in round three against Winnipeg. Oh my god, we're going to get killed. How are we not going to get killed?